So ladies and gentlemen, Ariana Grande is officially a home wrecker. She has a, a castmate on Wicked named Ethan Slater, who just a couple of years ago married his high school sweetheart. They squirted out a kid, and oh, now goodness. we're <laughs> and, and now we have to put it like that. Yes. So they had a kid, and now he's left his wife for Ariana Grande. Yep. It's like they're so disgusting that they deserve each other at this point. So Ariana Grande's boyfriend, Ethan Slater, has now officially filed for divorce from his wife, his now estranged wife. Uh, as of yesterday, and I just can't respect someone who preaches feminism and then goes on to be a husband stealer. Yeah. And all of her fans are like having a mental crisis about this because she obviously did something abhorrent, but they have to defend her no matter what because they're insane. Um, and now Ethan Slater's wife, Lily J, has gone to the press officially and said, Ariana is the story, really. She's not a girl's girl. My family has just been collateral damage. Yeah. So she got married <clears throat> to Ethan Slater in 2018. They were high school sweethearts together for over a decade, had their baby only in August last year. And he went off to film Wicked uh, in london with ariana grande and i've heard that they didn't even try to keep their relationship secret on set this quote from the inside source says ariana and ethan weren't careful they would hold hands on set between takes they were sloppy and not hiding it they're not even ashamed. You know what this is? Like, as much as I, I said earlier, I was like, look, this is a win for everyone because all of the topics that end up getting covered on shows like this end up being divisive on some lines. Is it divisive on racial lines? Is it, is it divisive on gender lines? Everyone's the bad guy in this story. You yeah. know what it reminds me of is Chris Tyson. Brings everyone together yeah. when two people, are man and woman, are pieces of shit. It reminds me of Chris Tyson. We can all agree on that. Chris Tyson, uh, in the story also reminds me of Chris Tyson, who, uh, who basically like gets married, has a kid, and then says, psych, I'm actually a woman. Uh, and Peace. now my, my child's life is going to be different forever because I have to indulge my every whim. I have to be selfish, which is what this gentleman is doing. Yeah, that gave like... I think he probably had like a sidekick complex toward Mr. Beast yeah. where he felt like he couldn't be the center of attention and the obvious route in 2023 to be the center of attention is to come out as trans. And but in this case, Ariana Grande also left her husband, Dalton Gomez, to be with Ethan Slater. And they're claiming that they were both single at the time they got together, but this is obviously a rebound. And it's just so disgusting that you would sacrifice a relationship of over 10 years with your I wife who you have a child with to be in a two-month fling with a pop star. Who's like, going to leave you? You're disgusting. She's going to leave him. Uh, by the way, everyone, look. He, he does, in fact, look like uh, weird Tom Holland if he had Mark Zuckerberg's eyes. That's him with his estranged wife in that picture. Yep. Who apparently was much taller than him. <laughs> Uh, with the heels on, she's taller than him there, it looks like. Yeah. It makes sense that he played SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah. Like you, he, you left your husband to be with a guy Sponge that Bob? played SpongeBob on Broadway. on Broadway. You're a clown. Like, what is wrong with you? You're sick in the head. And also, Dalton Gomez, her ex-husband, uh, Ariana Grande's ex-husband, said that he is devastated by the news and a separation is not what he wanted. He wanted the fairy tale happy ending and it's not looking that way. And ever since they started having issues, he wanted to work out. He wanted to find reconciliation. And even now, he still wants their relationship to work out, despite some other reports that are dubious that he's dating again. Um, and I think that her husband is religious as well, right? Yeah. So uh, that's, that's, probably, that's probably yeah. why he feels more strongly about keeping the marriage together. But yeah. yeah. It's just uh, like these are those cases where like everyone can understand like Mary's going to have a problem with this, uh, you know, the, in the past. We talk a lot about these types of things, but even I'm just like, really, dude, I like, have like a kid a year ago. Yeah. You've been together like these are just horrible Everyone knows people. like Mary is the, the moralist who thinks that marriage is insoluble and, you know, a sacrament. But even people who are like secular and, and don't think of marriage yeah. that way Not are still rightfully disgusted by this display like at least if you're going to have an affair then hide it 
Yeah. Have the don't courtesy know. to don't, the world don't, to, to don't, hide your disgusting don't have an behavior. Affair. Don't well, have obviously, an affair. don't don't cheat on your spouse in the like, first don't place. Don't get but... married if you're not going to take it seriously. Of like... course, yeah, but but at least if you don't care about that and you want to cheat anyway, then have the courtesy to keep it to yourself <clears> instead <throat> of displaying it on a world stage and humiliating your spouse. Yeah. And your child, who is also roped into this. Say what you want yeah. about Tom Hanks. He may be uh, he may drink the blood of children for all we know, but he's been married for thirty Royal. years. This is an exception, not a rule in Hollywood. And you know, the divorce rate is skyrocketing for normal people as well. But in Hollywood, it's like you're a unicorn if you stay married. Uh, on Pierce television, Brosnan's like the only guy in Hollywood that stayed married. That's yeah. that. There's there's. Pl- I, I'm gonna. I'm when gonna it comes to list. movie got, stars, I, though, more. when it Mo- comes to A-listers, yeah. Well, yeah. That's like the Chris. You'll O'Donnell. find maybe a handful of them that haven't been divorced. It's it's really funny. Chris O'Donnell actually. That's why he left. Like when when he was getting big, like around the time Batman Forever came out, uh, or Batman and Robin. Like he said, he made the active choice to no longer go after like those big budget. Uh, roles, you know, to to be like an A-list celebrity because he got married. He wanted to have time for his family. So he went to TV where, you know, he's not going to be jetting off to another country every every few months to film a movie. So he got uh, a job on like uh, a procedural where he makes a lot of money. He works long hours, but they all sure. live in the same place. At the end of the day, he goes home at night to his wife and his kids. Whereas the because, lifestyle of pop stars or yeah. A-lists movie stars is that you're paid to essentially take like tropical vacations and go to summer camp with other adults where you're drinking and doing sex scenes with someone other than your spouse it's just not conducive to having a lasting relationship with anyone and and, uh, by the way guys like if you want if you want a little bit of an upside to this i can i can search for a small upside to this okay if this guy can pull Ariana Grande. All I'm saying is, it is go shoot your shot. Yeah, go shoot your shot. What does she see in him, uh, other than that she can't be single for more than two months? He sees a lot in her because he has enormous bug eyes. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, look, I'm, I'm being, I'm being. A Don't hate here. on the bug I'm, eyes. I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm, I'm joking here. But the point is, guys, like it's they're bad people. They're they're bad people, and you shouldn't celebrate bad people. And if me, who tends to be more neutral in a lot of the, like Mary's the moral one. I'm the one always like, do what you want as long as nobody else is getting hurt. People are getting hurt here. Yeah, it's and just you're, you're a bad person. The the fan base for Ariana Grande was so ready to shit on her her ex husband yeah. for their divorce. They had their pitchforks out. They were ready to give him the Jonah Hill treatment because one report said that he you know found issues with her having such a demanding schedule where she had to be out of the country and they didn't have time together, which is a normal expectation for any marriage. Yeah, but like they they wanted the narrative that she's just this powerful girl boss feminist. And he's threatened by her success, and he's a misogynist. When the reality is that she's cheating on him. Yep. Um, so there's really no way to defend this. It's it's depressing that it's the type of thing that that has to be defended by some people based on the lines of like what celebrity they support or like. Like that's just embarrassing. It's like Taylor Swift fans who who will defend her no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Granted, we don't know the ins and the outs of what happened in those relationships, but it's not like like the info. Let's let's be honest. If the information comes out that Taylor Swift just like cheated on John Mayer with ten dudes at the same time, it's not like Taylor Swift fans would say she's the problem. They would still no. find him to be the problem because they're not actually devoted to her happiness. They're devoted to her as like a weird messianic figure yep. to that. Them. Like they, they don't actually want her to be in a relationship. They want her to be in a relationship with them. Yeah. They want Ariana Grande to be in a relationship with them. So it, who cares if she cheats on her on her husband with the bug eyed dude from from SpongeBob SquarePants the musical? <laughs> like, like you're such a loser. How do you look yourself in the mirror? How do you sleep at night? You you left your husband for for the guy that played SpongeBob in a musical? Like 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 she didn't like like you think that through loser. in her head like a little bit. She's just like maybe like she's like <laughs> she's like professional athlete, investment banker, SpongeBob SquarePants the musical <laughs> lead. You I know? yeah, I guess she's his beard now. 
<laughs> uh, it's just it's just shocking to me that no matter. I, I will say there's a, another upside that like this is a very like it's such a very stereotypical stereotypically Hollywood story that it's almost uh, it's almost inspiring. Like no matter how much bad stuff is going on in the world, no how much no matter how much it sucks that Tucker Carlson uh, or that Ice Cube has been ghettoized into doing interviews with Tucker Carlson because everyone's so divided, celebrities are still scumbags no matter what, yeah. well, right? Like the best argument to abolish no fault divorce is just to tell the people who don't care about the the fidelity and insolu uh, in, insolubility of marriage don't get married at all. Yeah. If you don't care about those values, then you don't need to engage in this this cultural institution. Why do you think that is that people who don't seem to it's just because the actual values of marriage have become so uh, misrepresented now or watered down? Uh, well, I mean, society's really demonized marriage a lot. Yeah. You know, the idea that, you know, through feminist uh, feminist kind of perspectives, the idea that women uh, should stay home or, or the idea that a woman would find happiness staying home and raising a family uh, and, and being a homemaker, it, that's become very foreign to a lot of young people. And it's looked down upon. Yeah. I mean, you no, know, the the idea that feminists have given to women is that you should not want to be a woman you should be you should want to be one of the one percent of men that have ever existed that are in massive positions of power like yeah. you, like women shouldn't want to be homemakers they should want and it's not even good enough to want to be men you have to be a boss it's not you know you not be a you know be a man do a man's job and go work in in you know construction waste management yeah. yeah it's go be the boss girl but that's such a minority of e of men never mind human beings but men so mm -hmm. and you you get society just constantly ever since murphy brown just shoving this down <sighs> people's throats in the 80s which is yeah. now 30 years ago can you explain this to me okay so murphy brown was a television show in the 80s and she was kind of the first girl boss she candace was bergen. had a, yeah candace bergen she had a a, a job she was the boss there and she had a kid this is the You're kind of telling me barbie wasn't the first girl boss this uh but i don't know that barbie ever had a kid this is a, this is a real life i mean not a real life but yeah. it's it's showing a supposedly plausible real world example. scenario it was it was yeah. a i think it was a it was a sitcom right it wasn't yes, a drama it was a, sitcom. it was a sitcom and it was one of one of the first ones that you saw a woman in positions of power i mean it was sex in the city like 10 years before sex in the city and with less sex um but that kind and of thank goodness for that. Yeah. But that perspective has been been the general narrative coming out of Holly, Hollywood for the better part of the past 30 years, probably, mm -hmm. you know, probably all of the past 30 years. And I think that that's starting to have or that has had a real impact on the attitudes towards marriage that people have. And then you throw in the fact that, you know, People are more open to talking about abuse in relationships yeah. and people are more open to talking about uh, divorce and there's the no fault divorce and stuff like that. So I've been re well, not not in the last week, but I was rewatching the show Damages with Glenn Close. And that's another example. And in, in it was about 2007 that came out. So not not an 80s show, yeah. but this is a show about a high powered lawyer who's got a kid, but the, but her relationship with the kid is strained. And, and like, it, it shows that the, having it all is not necessarily what it, all it's cracked up to be in it. Yeah. Because she is, first of all, she's an extremely unlikable character. She's the main character, but my goodness, is she like, you're supposed to marvel at, at how good she is at her job, not like her for who she is as a person, right? And there's, uh, as much as that still felt like feminist propaganda, because in a lot of ways they can never just show the character as doing these things without taking a nod to like look at how good I am at this the men don't want me to succeed and in this show it ends up becoming more of a murder mystery but in the show she's not necessarily a likable character she doesn't have a great relationship with her son her relationship with her partner the guy is like it's a little bit more stable than it probably would have been been done today and now all of these shows you know compounded over the last 30 years coming together to send the wrong message to men and women in society today. Mm -hmm. So I just hope people don't look at this story, especially young girls that, that pay attention to Ariana Grande and just become so blackpilled about their possibility for, for finding a spouse. Like 
this one comment said, uh, I can't imagine being together with a man for more than 10 years and that's the empathy he has toward you and your feelings. I'm flabbergasted. Wait, what? Oh, oh like because that he was he would, really, yeah. yeah. She also, the wife says she was totally blindsided by the news and he only told her like a couple of days before the media got access to this information. He's an awful person. He is a, he is yeah. a genuinely awful Just, person. Maybe this is a, a PSA not to, not to date guys who are into musical theater. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.